Oh, well, let me put this up. You're you're fine. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know if I'm gonna have time to edit it, but you know, people like the the raw, of course, the reality, yeah, the real aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So, I guess the best way to start this is just kind of give you a rundown of why we came to visit you, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so. Let's see. All right. So basically, I figured at the six month point of training and preparing for walk three, I figured we would take him in to get looked at because he's been on, Grayson has been on this low dose heartworm mm -hmm. preventative for since we adopted him. A little over a year, yes. Yeah, back in 2020 ish. Mm -hmm. And so the thinking that as it was presented to me was um, that uh, he would. Um, uh, that Pyrenees have an atypical idiosyncratic reaction mm -hmm. um, to heartworm. This is how it was presented to me. Mm -hmm. And so without fact checking that or looking sure. into that, I, I do know from um, from personal experiences on my tra travels, I've, I've met with so many Pyrenees mm -hmm. people and I have personally um, um, seen uh, Pyrenees that have had bad reactions mm -hmm. to heartworm the whole process. Mm -hmm. But whether that's you know, uh, a, a unique case or that's right. representative. Sure. We don't have any of that data. Right. So, and so part of that is because he's a rescue, a lot of the rescues just can't afford to exactly. do the full, the, treatment. Right. the regular treatment, right. so they do a slow kill. Correct. And the great, the, the, the National Great Pyrenees Rescue uh, was paying for the treatment as well. So the, the right. financial the slow, yeah. burden was not on, on right. us, even though that was never the reason. Sure. Um, so they've been great. So I, I always knew that we would be at this point midway to sort of do a complete health check to mm -hmm. see where he's at. Um, because when we originally came came to you, uh, Dr. Heather, um, it was, okay, you, you are certified um, rehab, right. um, and we wanted to get started with training. Mm -hmm. um, but then we, we kind of gave you the history and the background, and then you said, go ahead and let's go ahead and get it checked out. Um, and so that's pretty much where we're at. So let's go mm -hmm. ahead and Absolutely. what are the results? Where are we at? Absolutely. So. You know, definitely with him before we, just knowing obviously the reason why he came to see me, you know, kind of what our goals are for him with, you know, getting him to walk, you know, as, as effectively as we can. Um, you know, definitely the exam, you know, kind of a good little workup on him is, you know, obviously, you know, kind of what we want to start with with him. And so, you know, when he told me he was heartworm positive, obviously that set up a little bit of red flag for me because, you know, anytime there is a heartworm positive dog, you do not want to you know, actually physically exercise them. And the reasoning behind that is that, you know, as far as heartworm disease, you know, they have adult heartworms in their heart. And, you know, at any time, especially when they're on a preventative to kind of help, you know, kind of increase the, you know, efficacy of them just dying over time, um, you know, and it, it, it basically shortens their lifespan, but it also, you know, prevents new growth. And so at any time these worms can, you know, die and then, you know, potentially cause an embolism. So you, want, you don't want to do a lot of aggressive exercise with these guys because there's just so much unknown and, and that, you know, we can go years and years and that may never happen. But it's one of those situations you can't ever guarantee that the health of these guys, when you promote an exercise program for dogs that's heartworm positive, you do put them at risk. So that's why we kind of backpedaled a little bit and it's like, okay, it's been a little bit since he's been tested. Why don't we just retest him? Right. Let's see where we are. He's been on the preventative. You know, there's a very good chance he might come up negative. So Which that's when we said the blood work out. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, and lo and behold, you know, his actual heart rate test came back negative, you know, negative. which was like, okay, wow. However, what threw up another red flag for me was just when we initially saw him, we took test x-rays because we wanted to see, okay, what does his heart look like? And based off his x-rays, I mean, he definitely, you know, had evidence of, of heartworm disease and that's a specific But look. you didn't, but you yeah. can't say that. Pardon me for interrupting, sure. but you can't actually see the actual heartworms Correct. on the x-ray, but you Correct. saw in the case it would be like an inflammation or Correct. something. Correct. Okay. So the lungs typically look inflamed and, you know, typically you have, um, you know, the pulmonary artery of the heart um, looks enlarged. Um, and sometimes actually the right side of the heart looks enlarged, almost looks like a reverse D 
symbol. Um, and so, you know, he had just basically from what the radiologist told us, you know, the pulmonary artery enlargement, which is what I originally saw on the x-rays too. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, he's, he has radiographic evidence. You know, however, you know, when we got that heart test back, I was like, well, you know, this could just be some residual from, you know, and he could have just become negative and maybe this is residual, it'll take some time to go away. Um, but, um, you know, so that's when, when we send out the blood work as well, we had an elevated eosinophil count, which is a type of white blood cell that's typically only present when there's, you know, either external parasitism, internal parasitism, or it could be secondary to allergies. So it's kind of one of those things that's like, well, you know, in combination with the radiograph evidence with the eosinophilia and the negative heart arm test, I'm like, oh, there's just evidence that we probably should look into this. You know, and, and more recently, we've discovered that these guys that are going through the slow kill method can develop what we call an antibody antigen complex. So what that is, and that's the body's way of just trying to, you know, trying to heal things and actually is kind of negative because our test only tests for the antigen that the female heartworm gives off, okay? Mm -hmm. So if there's an all-male infection, all-male heartworm infection, we're not gonna find it, okay? So that's why you have uh -huh. to look at ancillary therapies. So the test only tests the female antigen. And so if the body creates an antibody that binds to that antigen, the test is gonna come up negative. It's mm -hmm. moot point. So the idea behind the additional test that I talked to you guys about and that we did end up running was a heat treated serum test. And so what that does is by heat treating the serum, it breaks those, those bonds. And so it allows the heart test to actually identify the antigens. So that's why we did that test. When that came back positive, it's like, okay, well now we're kind of at a spot where now everything kind of makes sense with what we're seeing, blood work and radiographic. Thank, thank God you you did that, yeah. boy, thank God. I mean, cause you, you're right, we were pretty much, mm -hmm. I was pretty much ready, it's like, okay, yep. Dr. Heather, let's, yep. let's figure let's, out the training program, right. let's figure out what we need to do to get his rehab going on, build up his core strength, mm -hmm. and I was ready to go. And so you basically just tor torpedoed our plans. <laughs> Unfortunately, no, thank, thank God. I don't know if I told you, I actually, when I was a child or my family had an out, well, a, do, a dog was in Texas. So mm -hmm. our, our household pets were, were not as, anyway, not nearly how I it take care of mine. Right. A long time well, ago. Sure. Yeah. They were chattel back in Texas. Mm -hmm. And I just remember, um, it was a, it was a golden retriever. And I just remember Alex, it was, her name was Alex and she was running and just fell over and died right there. And that was my yeah. first introduction. And I, and ever right. since we've gone through this, I gotta tell you, I've had nightmares about that. Yes. So, but there, it's good to have that fear, that latent fear. The good news right. is Ginger and why, well, um, Ginger sometimes help me, helps me with training him or, mm -hmm. you know, when I walk and stuff. But, but good thing is I, I haven't uh, done anything physically exert, right. that would right. exert him right. up until this point mm -hmm. because I wanted that additional sure. layer of second set of eyes on it to be, mm -hmm. be, to be sure he was ready to go and start training. So we would never do more than like a mile mm -hmm. and he would do it pretty good. Never had, and there right. never was symptomatic. Right. So he was not symptomatic. Mm -hmm. We got a first negative uh, yep. test. And if you not had seen some sort of indication right. in the eosinophils and also right. in the, the x-ray, it wouldn't have war in, uh, warranted or justified the, right. sec the additional diagnostic. Right. So thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what did we see on the echocardiogram yep. and where are we at? Exactly. We so um, so basically the next step was, okay, you know, knowing that we have a little bit of enlargement in the heart, now let's actually, you know, get a more in-depth look at the heart itself and find out, hey, what does this chamber size look like? Is there any, you know, anything there that's concerning that, you know, once we get rid of the heart arms, are we going to be concerned about like some type of long-term heart issue? So um, also, sometimes radiographically, you can actually identify the adult heartworms in the pulmonary artery. So that was kind of another thing that, you know, yeah, if we see them, okay, great. Then we you knew we were like 100%. Yeah. No, okay, yeah. this is this is it because you know tests are great and you know obviously that sometimes one test is not always just definitive so you look at the whole big picture and you know if you can do a bunch of things that can give us more of a definitive then heck and plus also be good for him long term is to kind of let us know okay what do we expect from this you know once we get rid of the heartworm so 
Um, as far as echocardiogram, you know, basically the, the overall size um, was fairly within normal limits. So like the, the muscle chambers, all that seemed to be good, which is good. Um, so I believe the only thing um, that they typically noticed was that on, like in the lung, I'm sorry, this is a radiograph, so I'm going over, going over that. Um, let's see, there we go. Yeah, she was discussed going over the, um, the x-rays on that one that they had the pulmonary artery enlargement and everything, which is in yeah. the lungs, okay? okay. Um, <clears throat> and so the, um, basically she found a, a heartworm in the pulmonary artery. Okay. Um, and so um, as far as his right heart was all pretty much normal. Um, and then um, he did have some tricus tricuspid valve regurgitation. So, you know, that the tricuspid valve is on is on the right side, okay? And so what happens is, is the valves, we have you know, these different valves. That so it's not closing properly. Correct, yeah. and so it's causing a regurgitation of blood. And so, yes, so, you know, whether or not uh, that's something that's reversible, you know, um, it may not ever cause them a problem. And do we but know, you know is there. it a reasonable assumption, not that this matters, not that the blame game matters, sure. but is it a reasonable assumption that that second to a um, to heart worm infection. That makes sense. That would so, sense. So he was heart form positive, actually, since, since we got him. So right, it yeah. seems like, so he was heart form positive. So over the past year and a half-ish since we've, since I've adopted him and been caring for him, we've basically been just trying to, we've basically been trying to, we've basically been keeping it at bay or at least right. not really right. new manifestations. Right. But, but whatever was there was able to grow like some mutant crocodile in a freaking New York sewer. And I hate that analogy, but it's a funny it's, one it really because funny. it keeps me from being so mad at myself and the, the people that didn't, that, that took care of him or abused him in the first place. So I, I had to find humor in, in the, 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 the insane world we live in sometimes. So, so my concern now, obviously, that he has an adult heart worm is just the, the, that whole idea freaks me out. Like, I even worry about, ha like, I won't even let him go out with Smiley, his mate. Yeah. And they don't really, um, there we go, I'm just knocking my lens out. <laughs> <laughs> um, they don't even um, they don't even wrestle a lot. Sure. They'll run around a little bit. There's not it's not high impact. It's low impact type stuff. And um, so I am I'm totally afraid now of of even doing any of that. So um, so based on what you you learned from the radiologist and and, and everything. So let's talk about let's have a realistic conversation about walk three because. We are now five and a half months for from go. Right. That's uh, as it's planned right now, as mm -hmm. it's scheduled. Um, I was um, in, in put a little wiggle room, mm -hmm. factor in some wiggle room into whatever I plan yeah. for things like this, right. force measure or whatever. Right. Right. So we have some of that. That's the good news. Um, and, but his health obviously is priority number one. Right. And um, so in thinking about um, five and a half months, um, let's go through what the treatment plan is first, and then we can talk about how much time does that give us for training, and is that going to give us a try right. time? Absolutely. So with with heartworm treatment, you know, this is going off the standards of the American Heartworm Association. So you know, they recommend treating you know a month of doxycycline. So which doxycycline is an antibiotic that actually helps kill the <clears throat> bacteria that the heartworm harbors. Uh, also helps decrease inflammation in the lungs, etc. So, you know, a 30 day treatment course of doxycycline is the recommended. Um, typically, they say to wait, um, and of course, you're still keeping them on a preventative every month, regardless. Okay. okay. That, let me clarify that because yep. Ginger wanted to do that, and so I just said, um, I will verify, to with, yes. verify that with Dr. Heather. Absolutely. He's to get his. Yes. So we're only a couple of days behind, so like, he will yep. get his when we get yep. back. Um, Absolutely. So, when I'm basically, you know, the heartworm treatment itself, the only thing it's going Going to do is kill the adult heartworms. That's what the injections are for. Okay. The preventative actually treats the larval which is stages, what it's been which doing. is what right, in which yeah. we don't want to give an opportunity for new growth. Right. Um, so that's okay. why we do the heartworm prevention as well once a month. So can keeping him on the heartworm prevention once a month, um, then you know, take typically so they recommend waiting um, so two months prior to treatment after the doxycycline. So doxycycline treatment for a month wait a month, start that, that third month basically, okay. okay? 
And so what we do is we do something called a split treatment. It's been known, shown to be the safest, most effective way. Um, there are def definitely different protocols. I mean, they've changed over the years. You know, there used to be a single injection and there was a two shot protocol, but you know, and the percentages of efficacy are different. Um, but as far as, you know, doing the research the Heart Association does, a three shot split treatment has been the most effective you know, and pretty much safest way to, to treat these guys. So, of course, any medication, no medication is benign. You know, we all know this, but, you know, I mean, the fact that he is not clinical, um, and, you know, in my experience, I mean, I've been a general practitioner for 10 years, and I personally have not seen specifically, breed-specific problems with heartworm treatment. Um, now, obviously, you have those those pets that are gonna have a, that are gonna have a reaction. I mean, I haven't personally had one thing. Good, thank the good Lord. <laughs> you know, I haven't. But you know, and the more severe their infection, the more potential right. for right. you know for for side effects. Um, so so let's, let's break this down because yep. this is where I start to freak out. Sure. So so there's we're we're doing the doxycycline. We're mm -hmm. one week into that. Yep. So we've got three more weeks, mm -hmm. and we're at one and three quarter pill. Yep. Bid. Mm -hmm. And so once we finish that, wait a month, and then it's the first injection. The first injection and so that first injection, injection because there is the adult heartworm mm -hmm. in his artery. Mm -hmm. What is what potentially? What's the worst case scenario? And what are the percentages? I'm a statistics guy, so what sure. are we looking at? Sure. Um, so as far as like the percentages, I don't have those exact percentages sure. of, of, of uh, you know, I just go off of my experience. Sure. Um, so, I mean, I would say, I mean, in my experience, less than like 1% are going to like right. have a react. It's very uncommon in my experience. Now, I'm sure obviously in the overall grand scheme of things you do as a research, depending on the area, you know, and how severe the cases are coming in, you know, that that may be higher. Is the risk proportional to the degree of infection? Absolutely. Okay. And the length of time it's been there. Okay. Um, so, you know, if we have a dog that comes in that has, you know, a distended abdomen that's like khaki, right. coughing, I mean, you know, to the point where we have yeah. signs of heart I've failure. Seen pictures yeah. of those dogs. Definitely. That's going to be a very, very scary situation. Right. So, those are the guys that it's like, Hey, you know, I mean, unfortunately, at this point, I mean, you can, you can get them out of heart failure with medication. You know, that's that's one thing. It's great, right. but the only way to fix it is to kill the heartworms. Delicious. And so then you 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 run the risk of doing that. It's, it's a, I feel like it's one of those lose lose situations yeah. kind of thing. But you know, thankfully, um, you know that doesn't happen super often. I think we've you know finally got to the point where heartworms is a very you know a lot of people kind of know what heartworms are and understand for the most part you know what we're going into so at least in our area i've definitely seen a significant decrease in the amount that come in that's good with heart failure which is good but that's, that's good you, know. yeah. well, you guys so, are doing a good you know, job uh, with that. when i was at the humane society i would say a good 80 to 90 percent of the dogs that we took in had heartworms yep and to varying degrees mm -hmm. and we didn't have any complications yep. treating them that exactly. i can recall it's yep. been a while yeah. but i I don't recall having yeah. any. Yeah. I, well, there was one one dog that had mm -hmm. some major complications, sure. but um, yeah, yeah, that was just one. Yeah, of it's, all it's pretty uncommon. Okay, so we're so we're reasonably certain. I mean, it has to be done. I mean, that's it. Right. It has to be done. So we got to go through mm -hmm. it. Um, so did you say that you wanted to keep them for the 24 hours? Um, so I don't keep them all day. So I usually keep them, or not, not overnight. So I usually get them in that morning. Um, you know, we do, which for him, we've already done the x-ray, we've already done the blood work, so we don't do any pre-out stuff. The only time, or pre-injection stuff, the only time I do that is if they haven't had any of that done. You know, I mean, because um, obviously if we're going to have problems, you know, I, we did have one dog, it wasn't my case, that did have a reaction, but, you know, ended up there was some some issues with it, something completely different and, yeah. you know, would have probably found it on blood work kind of yeah. thing. So we always do blood work and x-rays on anything before we treat them, just, you know, because it helps us to, yeah. you know, figure out, okay, is there anything else going on right. that this treatment is going to affect? Right. So we've already done that. There would be nothing that would prevent me from moving forward and treating him. Um, so I typically treat him in the morning so I can kind of watch them throughout the day. Um, we do go ahead and start them on um, prednisone. 
okay? Because what that does is that obviously trying to help you know, counteract yeah. any potential reaction, okay. but it also helps with inflammation in the lungs right. too. So, you know, we want to do that because what this injection is going to do is it's going to start killing these adult heartworms. And so we want to try to manage that as best we can. It's going to cause an inflammatory response. Sure. So we want to give them the most comfort, you know, for going through this process. Um, we also like to put them on pain meds. Okay, I usually do it for about two or three days, um, you know, because we are giving them a, a injection and we give them in the, um, the epaxial muscles in the back. Okay, it's a really big muscle. Um, you know, I mean, I have very, I have literally a super, super low chance of them being t really not very, usually very sore along the muscle, but we want to make sure that yeah. we cover that yeah. because, I mean, it's a, you know, it's an injection, it's in a muscle, it's going to hurt. So, um, <clears throat> you know, we do that and we mark obviously which side we do because when they come back in, we want to do the opposite, you know, side. We don't want to give them injection the same side, that kind of thing. Um, so, um, I typically monitor them for a few hours, so usually let them go home, you know, around 4.30 or so, and just have you guys monitor them really closely, obviously. Anything of concern, you know, typically what we're going to notice is, you know, any kind of like coughing is kind of the first sign of anything going to go on. So, you know, I kind of give you a list of things to watch for. If you notice any of those things, you call me, um, you know, we'll go from there. But, you know, it's it's very uncommon for us to see those effects. Um, so usually, um, you know, they go home, we're going to have them kind of be very, very calm, obviously restricted uh, for that 30 days. And then they come back in for the second set, which is a two shot protocol one day apart. Okay. Now, previously, we would keep dogs overnight with that. Um, I've kind of gotten to the point where, you know, unless it's a 24-hour facility, I'd rather them be monitored, yeah. okay? So what I do is I keep them again most of the day, have them go home, and come back the next day. If we can give those shots around the same time, so if they come in and I'm able to give them, then I'm perfectly fine with the owner just bringing them back in the morning for the second injection, and then letting them go home that evening. And then as far as injections, they're done. Okay. So, I just want to clear something up. Sure. He owns me. I don't know. As you can, yeah, yeah. That this is very true. Yes. <laughs> so let me ask a couple of questions. After he mm -hmm. gets the two injections, mm -hmm. then when at that point. Do, you, do we wait another 30 days Correct. and test him again? So, okay. so we wait, so we do another 30 days of confinement, okay, okay, or restriction, you know, as far as exercise. So we typically do not test them until six months after the second injection, okay? And the reason okay. why is because it takes that long for that antigen to dispense out of the system, okay? okay? Now, as far as exercise, you know, we can start exercising them, kind of a slow return yeah. uh, to kind of normal activity level, but we can't confirm a negative test until six months after the injections. Mm. And I've even had some, you know, and not to and <coughs> not to freak you out at all, take a little bit longer than six months yeah. for that antigen to dissipate, but it, that is extremely rare. Usually at six months, it's gone. So. Yeah, but when you... So, okay, so sorry, you're... Um, so we're... No. I'm just like for 30 days, I think we're a month on the doxy, right. then we wait a month, so mm -hmm. that's two months to the second one, then you wait another month for mm -hmm. the two, okay. and then you wait at least 30 days mm -hmm. before, so okay. that's... Before exercise, so that kind of lets us... So is that right. four months? Am I, am I four missing months. just four months? Okay. So we have yeah, a month correct. and a half to train. Correct. And correct. so, okay, so realistically... With um, what? Why? His... Why are you gaming this out with her? This is a my walk. B why, and, and my show. Why are you gaming this out? And three might be seeing my dog. Why? Why are you taking? You not the guy because because. So realistically, giving yeah you know, that month and a half right one to get him <clears throat> the exercise to give him the strength and the core right. you know the, all right. that stuff. Right. But with his heart, you know, when you guys did the x rays and everything else, when do we think this is heart that he, you know, is physically. When the, when the inflammation uh, right. subsides. Exactly. Right, right, right. Um, so, you know, typically once, you know, the heartworms are gone I and mean, we're going to start to see you know, a little bit obviously decrease in that inflammatory. I mean, sometimes, you know, there there is some more permanent, you know, look to it. And yeah. I mean, I've x-rayed dogs years later and you can still see some evidence, okay. you know, but clinically, you know, we don't, we don't see any concerns there, you know, I mean, clinically they're doing okay. So it might not at least, you know, completely resolve, mm -hmm. but it obviously, once you remove the source of the inflammation, which right. is that, then we should start seeing some improvement. Okay. okay. So, okay. so 
I want to stop that conversation sure. and set that aside because okay. that is treatment and that's done. Correct. So that is done. Moving forward with that. Yep. <laughs> Second is walk three. Mm -hmm. So let's set everything aside again. Sure. Start with walk three. If I came to you as a rehab mm -hmm. um, specialist, what what is okay. the designation again, please? I have a problem oh, with alphabet. Oh, it's CCRP or Certified Canine Rehabilitation Practitioner. I have a problem with um, <laughs> uh, acronyms, alphabet sure. soup, so a that's CCRP. Correct. Um, that's very similar to Russia, though, which is CCP or China. Is one of the <laughs> I don't want to well, get that wrong. That. Well, that's yeah, why no, I'm, no, I'm definitely not. I don't want to get that acronym <laughs> wrong. CCRP. Got yes. it. Okay. So, uh, so, 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 say, so just pretend that I came to you and said, yeah. um, Dr. Heather, this is what we want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to walk about uh, 350 ish miles, potentially 400 miles and mountainous um, terrain on, on highways up in New York state in fall. So, um, so, okay, we're um, and, a half to turn. and we have, but no, no, I just set that aside, oh, set that oh. aside, set, set that aside, please. Again, you're not okay. steering this ABC. <laughs> This is not your deal show. So, so, um, so, uh, and I want to do it. Let's just, let's not even talk, talk about the time consideration. I would like to do it in 60 days. Okay. And so that would mean, um, walking essentially five ish miles uh, a day. Okay. okay. And so just alone on his three legs right. with the missing the rear yeah. limb that he's missing. So I came to you, I said that. And then I said, okay, so what would be, how long would we need to train to get him up to where you would be comfortable and feel like he's in peak physical condition to be able to endure that just stand alone, just with him walking on his three, unassisted mm -hmm. with his three limbs. That's okay. question number one, yeah. scenario number one. How long would we, would we need to train? You know, um, honestly, I mean, I would probably at least set aside, I mean, you know, a, a good six months. I mean, you know, just knowing he's got, you know, the handicap here. Yeah, he can walk a mile now, you know, but we think about consecutively walking five miles, you know, for this long period of time. Okay. Wait, I want to stop you there, though. Uh -huh. It's not consecutive. I can control the pace okay. of the walking. Okay. So the way I've done it in the past is walk a mile-ish, which mm -hmm. is 15, 20 minutes, sure. and then sit and rest as long or as, okay. as necessary. Mm -hmm. Then do the same, repeat, then rest as long as necessary. I okay. control okay. the pace okay. of our movement. Okay. So never in any of my 4,000 miles that mm -hmm. I've walked with my four, three previous Pyrenees, Hudson, Murphy, and Indiana, have I ever stressed them or strained them. The only other strain that we've ever encountered was heat sure. and heat exhaustion. Right. And that was the time where sometimes I had to sideline and I had to walk alone right. because of the risk of that. Exactly. So, so mm -hmm. I want you to think about the least strenuous conditions yeah. to do this. Mm -hmm. and, and I shouldn't really have put in the time factor in there because I can mm -hmm. truly control that. I can take yeah. three months to walk. Okay. I can actually take four months to walk. I'd rather yeah. not right. because the resources that are required <laughs> right. exactly. to, and the, the logistics of doing mm -hmm. that get vastly more complex sure. and I require more money and more mm -hmm. support and I only have limited amount of funds and trying to do the documentary and all these right. other things I'm trying to do. Sure. So, so with that in mind, um, so now, now take, now, now continue with okay. that. It's not, I'm we're not going to cut it in half. I mean, you know, I'd probably say, you know, at least three months. I mean, we want to give him, you know, want to give his muscles time to, you know, to, to get bigger. We want to have time for, you know, us to actually see core strength and things like that. Muscle takes time to grow and, mm -hmm. you know, and obviously endurance. And you think about somebody who's going to be, you know, doing a marathon. I mean, they train for months yeah. and months and months, you months, know, months, and, and you months. know, obviously we, I know we'll be able to stop and stuff, but you know, I would, for, for him and with his handicap, I would, I would definitely at least three months of, you know, some pretty, you know, hardcore, you know, like 
core strength and, you know, kind of, you know, uh, endurance type of training. Um, I mean, obviously not like, you know, right, <laughs> running, right. running miles right. and stuff like that. But Cherries of fire. we want to make sure we give him enough to where he doesn't, you know, he doesn't get tired really easy. You're right. having to stop more frequently, that kind of thing, which I know you would if he really needs that. Absolutely. Obviously, because the altitude, everything is going to be a little different. Correct. Like there is altitude. Here Absolutely. Versus, there is that. you know, out there, I mean, it's going to be a little difficult to really predict how well right. he's going to respond to that too. And so, air. Right, right. So, I mean, we can do what we can as far as, you know, but I would rather, you know, give him more time to be able to prepare, you know, for those types of so changes. So, three months ish. Yeah, three months ish. Three months ish. Okay, yes. so now would your answer change if I said we're now not just walking on his three legs? We're going to use a combination potentially of a prosthetic um, and a cart. Um, and um, would that change your answer? Um, Accelerate that potentially. Um, hard to say because it also we got to be able to train him to those things. That that's absolutely correct. <laughs> right. No, that's so, no, you, I, I was right. going to get to that, but you can't be more yeah. right. The prosthetic is such a, a it big is question mark. It's a huge curve to think about. Now, some take right to them. Right. In that in that very way, milk right. could change things. But if I mean, I have some literally. I put them in a cart or prosthetic. And they don't want to move. So you've, you've dealt with that then before. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, you're like, I, I can't believe our past connected. You're the perfect <laughs> person. We, because you, you're taking care of the heartworms, right. and uh, I fuse praise a lot when I, I value people. She's but the you, perfect but you, but you know what we're dealing with, you know, right. specifically. Right. Um, you're you right. You do which, oncology as well. Yeah, exactly. I don't do you that. You need to get your board certified. I mean, when, I do. Because well, we need one in Memphis. I anything more than a regular GT on that. <laughs> um, um, so, uh, kind of lost my train of thought. Uh, because, because you're right, because we do not only have uh, building up strength issues, we also have um, avoiding repetition injury mm -hmm. issues, right? Yeah. So that's why we train over a longer right. period of time. Yeah. So, um, so, so I agree with you. I don't think three, three months-ish is probably going to yeah. be the, the, the minimum. Um, can, you know, cons it's considering best case scenario right. for everything that he, resp that he responds well, does well, all the Correct. boxes. Correct. I forgot to ask you, and then Ging I was trying, I related this to Ginger and I wasn't sure. Are we going to do a follow up, follow up echocardiogram? And if so, is that in six months? Or do we one before? That's that? when I would do it. Um, so it does not make sense to do one before just to like, it if really I can afford does. it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. it, it, I don't think it's going to, because I would make sure, you know, okay, yes, engine okay. negative, because if there's, which I think is, is extreme. I've literally never had one, you know, not 100% become negative, but, you know, I would want to before I'd even, because I wouldn't want to, you know, obviously see any anything that I'm like, oh gosh, well, but if he's still positive, then oh, okay, well, I expect that to see that. So I would rather wait until we're 100% negative on that six month test before I would do another echo. Yeah, you know, I, I lost a dog to a, a nasal adenocarcinoma, and he went through IMRT 30 days, mm -hmm. and there was like a, what, a three or four month period where it makes no sense to do a follow up um, CT to the scan, and it's like the most, it's just torture, yeah. um, because yes. um, I think we had like a month left to go, and Murphy started bleeding through the snout again, and I was just like, I wanted, I called CSU, Colorado State, and I just see Withrow, and I'm like, can we just please get a good scan? I want to see if it worked, and it didn't. It failed. But you know, it's that that waiting. It's the waiting. But if I understand yeah, it. It, it, it doesn't give us any diagnostic right. It's uh, not going to change anything. I mean, right. we wouldn't do anything differently at that point. You know, it would just be more yeah. or less that let's wait till we're negative. Let's see if there's any anything from a you know permit damage standpoint. And if there is. How we treat it? We'll talk to a cardiologist. We'll say, okay, do you recommend us doing anything, or is this just a monitoring situation? Yeah. You know, and that very well may be what it is. Um, you know, because it seems, you know, we have some changes there, but they seem subtle right now. So I think the sooner we get the heart out of there, the least damage we can, you know, we can expect to, to okay. overcome with the heart. Um, so I want to go ahead and start working on the 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 the, the, re, the rehab exercise plan. So mm -hmm. while we're doing all this stuff on sure. the treatment, so I want us to go ahead things. and do that. So if I push the, the walk back to October, mm -hmm. um, forward or back, I'm always confused on which way that goes. Yeah. My, yeah. Mind, my mind's reversed <laughs> on so many things and how people lo how yes. people see things logically to them. Yeah. So uh, push it to October, and that would put, push us more to December, and we right. get some cold, mm -hmm. and then you have to worry about ice, icy conditions, mm -hmm. and walking that, and that presents a whole new set of, uh, of right. issues. Right. Um, oh, I wanted, I wanted to backtrack about, I um, got interrupted about... Um, 
about training. Mm -hmm. So it, but included in this plan though, we wanna make sure that um, I wanna train for, I'm trying to work with some, some guys to work on a prosthetic. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if that, that's gonna go through, but we we'll wanna sure. train with the card as well. Cause so we wanna have several options. We wanna have mm -hmm. a, a prosthetic, and, and not only um, a prosthetic as a fixed limb, mm -hmm. um, which is what they're working on, yep. um, which, which is good for um, flat, right? Zero grade, you know, right. right terrain. But we're in mountains up in the Adirondacks, and then right. it's hilly in the Hudson Valley, then it gets down to, to New York City, basically, and then you're at sea level, right? Mm -hmm. So what I talked to them about was having like a second, like a half nub, like a nub. Mm -hmm. So like when you're walking up and down, he would use it like a nub, like what um, Ginger had a three and a half legged dog buddy, and mm -hmm. he would just use that to pivot and everything. It was right. really effective. Mm -hmm. So 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 we want to train on on potentially those three different devices. Mm -hmm. You know, the prosthetic, the half nub, and the the card. And then we either have um, then we have we'll have another backup plan just if he gets exhausted, then somebody will just come pick him up. So we'll okay, have sure. we'll have several plans. Okay. So okay. so what we want to do is we want to we want to we'll want a, tr uh, uh, a rehab training plan that gets him to what you feel like would be his his uh, his ideal fighting weight as uh, to get a condition mm -hmm. to get on the road. And then um, you know however we're going to benchmark that. You know, if like into training at you know month one into training, if we don't feel like he's right. you know making those, exactly. so because you understand is that I'm at the point right now from walk three is I have to make a time commitment. Right. Ginger is trying to set up um, um, uh, a Events. <laughs> we call it the final mile. We have a big group of people in Boston. We had like hundreds of people from 21 states wow. fly to Boston to walk that final mile Ooh. from um, to the Boston um, Common, and yeah. we had a big event. So in like, but New York City, that requires months of, of, of permitting and all these things. Sure. So we have to make commitments. So I, so we need to think about those realistic things. So sure. at some point, I'm going to commit to, I have to commit to a, like a, a November, I mean, a October, a October. Well, let's just say this. I am, I'm not committed to anything right now. Yeah. I'm going to go um, take all this data. We're not, I know we're not done. And I'm gonna take from, to take all this data from this conversation and go sit on it for the weekend. Sure. And then um, Ginger and I are gonna film separately, kind of game everything out and talk realistically all the considerations, such as we need three months to get permitting in this area, and, mm -hmm. you know, we need all this support over here and yeah. get this set up. And so, but right now, you know, in weather. In weather but the, the, if we don't get it in October, then now we're in we're in spring, you right. know, early, mm -hmm. you know, early May, and that yeah. kicks it out, and then it's just a different beast. Right. And you know, I'm not averse to do it if his health is at risk at right. all. But I, it, it could also be a combination where I also do this walk in part by myself. So right. we 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 do as minimal impact to him. Right. So I want you to go into this thinking there's there's all these scenarios okay. where where we have assisted devices, mm -hmm. we have he can be picked up from the road and taken time off and it's just me and comes and you know and just does a mile a day. Right. So I want you to think about all of these scenarios we go into it sure. and in the training plan come up with benchmarks of you know here's where I think he needs to be cuz I've never trained with the dog formally. I've just got just we just backpacked and I put weight on them all slowly over time and I won't be putting weight on him at right. all, obviously. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, well, they don't recommend it till dogs are, um, you, uh, large breed or two, and I think he just turned two, but yeah. still. Um, yeah, but he's no not, yeah. He, he won't need it because I'm in, we're, I'm in New York State, so I'll, I'll have yeah. access to everything. Yeah. So well, I wanted might, to. He might carry his treats in his bag. When I was on the West Coast, I mean, I was like sometimes 40 miles without any service, so I had to carry like, you know, gallons of water yeah. and we had to carry all of our weight. Right. So this is not, the good news is, right. yes. <laughs> we're not in the middle of, <laughs> I would say, we might be having a different conversation. I, 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 I say the Adirondack Mountains, there are mountains, but, but it's like an hour from Albany, the, right. the, the right. capital of New York or something. So we're not Knuckleheadsville, New York sure, State. Sure. Um, so, so we have plenty of, of support um, in the area. So um, so, so that's what I, I would like to do. I want us to proceed as though we're going to train sure. and get him treated and trained. I'm in ready to go in October because I just don't think um, hold on a second, I, got, I got, can't lose this thought. Um, I just don't think that uh, September is is feasible. Yeah, you agree, agree on that, right? Yes, yeah. Okay, so uh, October ish or October ish, and we can play around the fourth. The fourth is a, because that's when Hudson died. And I, I was an honor to him, but that's just whether we do that or not, I'm not sure. sure. So we'll, we'll see about that. It's all about trying to 
finding a way to be able to get the walk three done this 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 fall. Sure. All right. Did I leave anything out? Now you can go. Um, when you were talking about a cart, can you mm -hmm. explain what a cart? What do you mean by a what cart? What do you envision a cart? Um, um, I yeah. oh yes, this is important. Pardon me. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I. Um, <laughs> And I also want to ask you who you deal with prosthetics, because if this company doesn't go through, I sure. might need to work with another company, yeah, and um, that's great. Somebody. That's awesome. So, um, but with the cart, what I would like to have, because I want to be able to carry everything, um, so I want to be have I want to be able to carry his prosthetic and maybe the little nub half prosthetic, and I want to have a collapsible cart. So I'm thinking like a rear cart, like with wheels that yeah. would be that would that would cause minimal impact to his hind yep. axis, but then give him that, mm -hmm. you know, mo mobility so he doesn't have to pull his back half. Right. So that's the, that's what I envision, okay, but for me, hold on a sec, but, but the trick is, is it has to be collapsible yep. because I have to be able to fold it up and then strap right. it on my backpack because there are times where I'm sure that the way I envision it, and you can incorporate this into your, your how you see how we should walk, mm -hmm. right? You can tell me, you know, Luke, I think that you should start out with the prosthetic in the morning mm -hmm. and then or start out natural for the morning for the first hour. Then the next hour, you know, sure. pick up the prosthetic and do the cart, whatever that is. So the, the cart has to be collapsible and I strap it on to my back. I think that was what my point was. I, I tend to forget mm -hmm. things. So, sure. um, but we, but uh, we want to have that. So even, even with the cart, he still has to have his chest muscles his and his body Absolutely. his body still has to Absolutely. As, and, and as well as his leg but um and in that question since you in, in that vein good question um ginger your first one of the day and in that um <laughs> we're constantly moving each other. Oh, i can see that <laughs> um in, in, in that vein um do you feel like that um that the back cart with the additional weight that 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 requires greater um uh, greater front front strength, front arm strength, than him walking like this. Um. Honestly, I mean, I really wouldn't say so. I mean, because you know you can adjust those carts as far as like you know um, you know height wise. So if he's using like he so where you can actually like use that right. leg and put it down. Right, so right. I wouldn't necessarily say it puts more weight on them. I mean, if it fits appropriately, it should help level out, you know, pretty good. Um, and uh, most of these carts, at least the newer ones, you know, are very lightweight and they don't add, you know, too much to them. They're actually, you know, really good as far as stabilizing. Like, I mean, I've, I've had some really, you know, good luck with carts with these guys. Um, and you so, train with them with carts? Um, I mean, I, I work with dogs who, who That's, I mean, carts. phenomenal. Yeah. That's right. I mean, from an endurance standpoint, I, I would be a first for me as far as you know what we're doing yeah. this but i mean you know for you know sure. everyday use as far as carts and stuff absolutely getting them trained to it getting them used and to is it that and what you like envision that. as being the most ideal cart kind of like with the para olympics um mm -hmm. those speed yeah um, i mean definitely a rear wheels. a rear cart for him i mean and, you and know, there, wheels, there are, are four of wheels with Eddie mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Is that what you do you think? So that's it's gonna be the the custom, yeah, the custom <laughs> cart. Um, I I've used a, a couple of different companies. Um, the because um, I would appreciate your input because sure, we yeah, know no, Eddie's I'm wheels. Perfectly fine with Eddie's. Well, I, and we I, have I, I, some Eddie's wheels. Yeah, we we have some Eddie's wheels that were donated by some dear friends okay. of mine, um, Carrie Snedden, and and, um, before, and so we, we don't know if we can retrofit them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we know you're going to. So yeah, we, so we're not sure if we can retrofit those and those will work. So, but my standard is always, um, so we know the Eddie's Wheels guys, they came out, they've been yeah. very supportive awesome. uh, of us and, and um, I will want them to have them on our podcast yeah. and stuff, but, but I, I'm one of, I want to talk to everybody and sure. I want the best design. Mm -hmm. and so I'm not married to or committed yeah. to any, any particular sure. one. So again, any one that you could recommend would yeah. be great. But right now we have that. But uh, but you are envisioning those little like speed speed rail. Oh sure, yeah, thing. definitely yeah. like the all terrain type of you know tire. Just you yeah. know from a you don't want the plastic wheels. You definitely want the rub. You know yeah. to help with you know with that kind of thing. So Maybe yeah, give there's some a lot of those of nose picker <laughs> leather gloves. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It's a southern uh, thing. So, yeah. um, okay, um, gosh, is there anything? I think we're all on the same page. Yeah. We have yeah. we're, we're clear on the objectives, the yeah. game plan. 
Um, yeah. I'm nervous as hell about treatment, but yeah, that's yeah. just going to be, I'm, I'm a nervous, I have to play, I'm Poppy and Mommy, yes, so I, I have to play those two roles. And I just lost a dog to Hudson to um, an inflammatory reaction to degranulation to, as a result of secondary to chemo um, yeah. from a, but um, he was, it was terminal sure. mast cell. Sure. It was terminal anyway, but it was, uh, right. but it was so. an inflammatory reaction that we just couldn't control. Yeah. So I'm freaked out sure. about that. I'm freaked out all the time about my kids. Um, I'm definitely freaked out about the walk, so so I hope you know I'm going in this with it just uh, a, and the stress now. Uh, I'm now five and a half months out. We're now six and a half months out now ish. We can maybe push that a little bit longer. You can always um, take baby cracking. I'm not. Your child is a nightmare. <laughs> she is evil, and she should be committed to the the the, the, the what is it? Criminally insane for dogs. <laughs> <laughs> she's not. She's, she's, she's cute as hell. She loves to get dressed up, and uh, we had a Mardi Gras. Her. We had. Do you ever pick that picture? We have a Mardi. We had Mardi Gras. Did I take those pictures on my phone? Let me show you. <laughs> no, they're on the they're on. Oh, they're yeah, on that phone, oh, yeah. No. <laughs> That's Grayson. This is Grayson's iPhone. That's an iPhone 13. This, oh, wow. this kid right here, he's, he's, he has an iPhone 13. Yeah, you awesome. should see um, the text messages that kid sends. Oh, okay. yeah. oh, speaking of, this is something I wanted to plan. So we're going to go ahead and put this up. This is the businessy part of what we're doing. So we're going to put this up on um, Fuzzy Butt Studios. Um, mm -hmm. And um, then I'm also going to put this up on as part of making... Um, making the making of walk three for all of the supporters to see where we're at in the process and all of the complicated things and decision making part of the process so um, but we want to make sure that we include you in social media so we mm -hmm. make sure you get all your social media and uh, also at some point we're gonna make sure we start raising some money to get you a hydrotherapy oh, contraption nice. here. That's and we so need one she get board certified as an oncologist. Oh, okay. That's 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 a different. That's a whole wow. different oh, piece. Oh man! Thing, so. But um, I'm really excited about this because we're gonna use this uh, Fuzzy Butts and Friends. Um, my podcast <laughs> is actually doing well. We're now on Spotify and iHeart channel, so we do okay. audio audio on the the podcast and okay. we do video on our YouTube channel. So um, I want to use this as an opportunity opportunity to educate everyone so as we go through this if we can't meet or anything if you just want to shoot a video sure. of just where we're at hey I want to give you guys an update yeah. what we need to do and just shoot it to okay. us and we'll post it or every, uh, okay. post it up on our YouTube channel and then share it with you on social yeah. media because um, this is educating people and making people as yeah. part of this process is, is 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 important to me and important to us sure. and taking care of Greg Ray yeah that's the most important yeah thing. So this this whole thing doesn't work without the fuzzy butts, right. or if something okay. bad happens to the fuzzy butts, and I'm I'm already scared. I got to tell you, I, I will say this another time because I know your your time is stretched uh, now. But I got to tell you, I'm my biggest concern with the car. I'm just nervous. All I'm just nervous. Yeah. Um, um, you know, we have. Uh, have you been up to New York State? I haven't. Okay, they have these things. Uh, anyway, they have uh, the highways there. Are basically, the shoulders are very tight, mm -hmm. and it's hilly and mountainy, and so we're we're in areas that are. Um, that are, the visibility is low, it's around um, tight corners and little to no razor thin shoulders and stuff. So on my previous 4,000 4, miles, having my kids, if there was ever, they walk to the left of me. So I'm always the first to get hit, mm -hmm. right? And so we always walk towards traffic. And so I'm always the one, you know, that if something happened, I can see it coming, I can push oh, us right. off at the last second. Mm -hmm. Okay, imagine trying to do that with a prosthetic All right. or, or a, a cart. cart. That, yeah, that will be uh, a problem. I'm scared as hell as that. So that's yeah. that's a problem. I'm just trying. So please sure. think about all of these yeah. things first. Yeah. How do we train for that? How we think for that? Mm -hmm. These are things we have to consider because it's a reality. Doesn't he naturally go to the other side? Well, I, I we'll see that once we start training. And yeah. I think we talked about it before. Is we started walking together and started mm -hmm. not training, being a loose term, just walking right. with the back with me sure. as a pack on backpack on and stuff. And when he walks, he he's missing his left limb is that right and and so that mm -hmm. like a like a rudder and a boat that makes yeah. him go right. towards right. me so right. he's walking towards me and that pushes yeah. me towards traffic right. so that might be a training issue so right. we so, so think, we have a lot more complicated right. things to go sure. through so exactly. I, i'm um i think the best training that? thing is for you to get a backpack and keep adding weight to it until you add his weight to the backpack it's and just, then we have a big baby <laughs> thing and you just you know, his legs are coming around you, and his head is like right here. He's like, yeah, exactly. I think well, that's I gotta, how that's I, I gotta tell you, 
um, <laughs> just carrying like a sack of taters on my back. Right, exactly. Like a right, sack. Right. I gotta tell you the funniest thing, and and um, had I known this, or well, anyway, I, I, it just Ginger and I were doing events in San Antonio for the foundation, and we had Indiana, my other great Pyrenees, and he was a little pup. I just had adopted oh him gosh. from um, <clears throat> Bowling Green, Kentucky, and um, and so we were at the the river walk. Mm -hmm. And San Antonio is a really cool area that you just walk around the river and a bunch of stuff to do. And so for some reason, that knucklehead, he just started limping or whining and, and acting like, a, oh, I can't walk. And oh, so yeah, he was making, and I, I was carrying him. Well, you are now. I don't think that's, I I don't think that's true. I think that's, no, no, you, that's your narrative. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, I'm the producer. I can edit out. I, I control the story, <laughs> what goes into what, the, what happened. Anyway, at some point, at some point, I'm like, okay, all right. So I threw him over my shoulder as mm -hmm. he was a little puppy, a little Pyrenees puppy yeah. in Houston. And we walked through every single woman. Every <laughs> stop. Oh, my oh. God. Oh, my God. Yeah. And it, the whole way through, uh, it was incredible. I was like, man, I, I finally knew that trick. <laughs> So, so I know if I put him on my sack, oh, like in this yeah. custom backpack with this cute little head oh, with a definitely. pink puppy up hat on, in Harryman style. There is another option too, I'll throw this out there and then we've got to wrap things up, is that I, I can do a cart. Some backpackers carry a cart, they have their gear, and we could put him in there. Right. And I can find some way to mechanize it and I can control it. Mm -hmm. So, and hopefully I can work with Tesla to get it solar powered or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I got, I, you know, I, I can, I'm, I've got to start training. I'm training right. myself. Yes. But yes. to be able to push that up a mountain right. and stuff, that's, I, that's that, that's that, right, that'd be tough I mean, for me. So we, we do have a lot of scenarios. Too, yeah. And I'm an imaginative person. Okay. Yeah. Anything, am I missing anything? I think so. Okay. Covered mostly everything. Yeah. Well, you're awesome. It's it's trail magic that our paths connected, and um, I look forward to to continue working with you and um, the treatment and training plan. Absolutely. All okay. right. Let me Wonderful. turn this thing off. All right. Hopefully we got it. Hopefully it didn't turn off and said you guys are talking for too long. You don't know okay. what you're doing. <laughs>